When a company rises this much out of the gate, is that good or bad for the company because they could have raised a lot more before even coming out of the gate, right? I mean, people look at it that way sometimes. I look at it, this is a consumer play. We're going after a very big market of the uh, you know, plant protein uh, replacements that are just going to sweep over the world. Mm -hmm. And I think the fact that the Beyond Meat IPO was historic is going to be great for the company. And I don't look back at what you know, was left on the table, so to speak. As an investor, I am just so happy. And, and what makes us different a little bit is that we are not just a traditional venture fund. At our crowd, we actually allow individuals to get in. And so you had like a dentist from Peoria putting 10 grand in the pre IPO private round last one at Beyond Meat together with people like Bill Gates mm -hmm. and that's democratic and that's something to celebrate as well. So you got in when? We got in about six months ago. So and you still hold shares? Absolutely. So it's good for you? Yes. We're, we're, we're just like ecstatic. <laughs> <laughs> How long do you hold on to it for because you have to hold lift through the, spiked have, and then it dropped? That's right. You have to hold on through the lockup, right? There's yeah. always a lockup in these yeah. things and, and you know, you can choose to hold on longer. I just think this is an extraordinary company, well managed at all levels with an incredible strategy and the product, I can tell you, is something that I diligenced myself and my family personally. Right. You tried it. At, we what not did only you tried think? it, we tried it in the middle of barbecuing enormous amounts of meat in Jackson Hole. And we went from the, the real meat to this and we loved it and that's what sealed our interest in the deal. So what's next though? How well, does what's this company next, grow? Right? Well, this company I think starts expanding into, uh, as they've talked about, expanding into all kinds of other meat categories. They're talking about steak and bacon. And, and by the way, as I'm someone who keeps kosher. So for me, this is not just like good tasting and healthy, and believe me, I need it. I'm, I'm someone who sort of works on my weight, but it's also this incredible thing which I can actually eat cheeseburgers now. So, you know, we're, we're rather excited about the investment. We're excited about the company, the big opportunity, and we're looking forward to our next IPO at our crowd, which is uh, a small company called Uber. Well, let, let's talk about <laughs> that. You were also an investor in Jump Bike, uh, right. which, or, which Uber bought. That's correct. So, so we, again, allowed individual investors to go to our crowd, choose Jump Bike. There we were quite early. We were in Series A, so we were in Jump for several years before Uber bought them. Now you see them all over San Francisco the bright red bikes in other cities and we're so now do you have a stake in Uber? We have a okay. fairly good stake in Uber and uh, again we're representing all of these small investors who are now able to not just read the articles about the billionaires who are getting richer whether it's Jeff Bezos or others but they're able to participate in these rounds before they go public and that's what's really missing I think from the marketplace because with all this enthusiasm about IPOs which is well placed certainly with companies like Beyond or, or Uber the problem is the people who are making most of the money is a very small circle, mostly uh, within a small radius of this studio right now. And those are the guys who really make the bucks. And then the rest of the people get to join at the IPO. What we're doing at our crowd is trying to essentially get them access to these deals as early as possible, but before they go public, so that the individual accredited investor, of which there are 14 million households in the U.S. alone, get a chance to participate. So you're based in Israel. That's correct. Can anybody be part of this platform? Anybody who is an accredited investor means you have to have an income of $200,000 dollars or a million dollars of assets outside of your uh, primary dwelling but if you're an American you can do that we actually have investors from 182 countries and in each country they set regulations but we work with what are called accredited or qualified investors we're not yet fully retail so how do you get into an, an in-demand private company isn't that funny yeah so it turns out that you have to add value today right the best companies can get money from all over. There's a ton of money in the market. But they choose from investors who can actually help them. And a group like our crowd that represents 30,000 accredited investors all over can help like mad. We get them connections to customers, to hires, to potential media coverage, and they want our crowd involvement and that's why they're coming to us. So what other opportunities will we see you? You mean you've done a lot of deals. <laughs> well, we have. A, Tell us about the well, next we, dozen. The last <laughs> uh, couple of weeks we announced three deals together with SoftBank, mm -hmm. actually. Uh, we participated in a $300 million round for Lemonade, 
which is the very cool insure tech company. We uh, participated in a round for Kluke, the big Chinese uh, unicorn in the travel space. Uh, we participated in a round for Climacell, who are doing next generation uh, climate prediction uh, software. We have companies like Zebra Medical who are interpreting radiological images with AI and SiteTech, where I was there together with them last this week at the Milken conference, who are doing incisionless surgery. Mm. On our site, every week we have a new deal. So with SoftBank potentially spinning off the Vision Fund, taking yeah. it public, does that impact you? Mm -hmm. We love that idea, okay? I mean, uh, first of all, you gotta give these guys credit. They're trying to think out of the box. They're thinking big. Masa is brilliant. People like Rajiv and Ron Fisher, the guys who are there are smart. Mm. And what they're trying to do is address very much the problem that we're talking about. They wanna give mom and pop investors exposure to this through potentially the Vision Fund, if these rumors are correct and no one knows if they are or not, uh, according to the Wall Street Journal. <laughs> but the, re the reality is that I think in general, opening this up to a broader range of investors is what the market needs. And whether it's platforms that are somewhat smaller than SoftBank, like our crowd, or SoftBank doing it, I think it's all good.